since you came home, we've kind of, every time we've hung out, tried to make it a point to get outside. And get in, get back into nature. Yeah, get back into nature. Yeah. Go do something like kayaking or hiking or walking the trails in the woods, stuff like that. Um, and we just made us talk so much about this concept of getting back into nature intentionally or more deliberately. So I wanted to come on here and, and talk to you about this a little bit because I think there's a lot more tied to this than... Um, than what like you might first see like it seems yeah. like a nice just it's more than meets the eye yeah it's more than sure. meets the eye it's not just like oh yeah get outside kids like I don't know there's something super human about being in nature that if we fear too far from it we lose a lot of yeah who we are and our mind kind of I think can feel the effects of that yeah more than we might be able to consciously be aware of so uh, to, to frame this for you guys I was thinking and I just explained to Casey Yellowstone, the series, starts with this image of a horse hit by a car, like in a car wreck, and it's getting um, killed by this car. And that's like this metaphor, this visual metaphor for how modern technology in the modern world is having a vicious, violent takeover of nature. And um, I think it's so poignant, it, and it like, resonates really well with me because we're sitting here in nature and we can see vans up there we can hear construction we saw power lines as we walked there's here trail cams and uh, there's people everywhere <laughs> yeah. there's humans have touched like everything right you were you were pointing out the concrete man-made concrete kind of slabs mm -hmm. around here it's really hard to like at least where we are seclude yourself in pure nature and not have the effects of modern civilization doing that encroaching um so what's it like for you and your relationship to getting out in nature from day to day what do you try to do to keep that bond or keep that important factor the first thing that's helped me too with like mental health is like a dead beaten horse but it is literally just going outside in the morning hmm. and like, like getting sunlight just getting thing. sunlight yeah. in the morning. yeah i do that i'll sit on my patio and also wildly addicted to caffeine yeah but Same. have my morning caffeine while watching like the sunrise or just going outside and smelling fresh air right. i think even if you have like like in my house, I have an air purifier and I have the AC running and clean air. I burn candles. It's clean, right? right? But it's not, it's to a point, it's like stagnant air where right. you go outside and you just smell it. It's like walking outside after it rains and you smell that. It's, it's different. I don't know the science behind it, but it has to do something like to your brain where it's bringing you back to like your primal self of being a living mammal. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, like the terminally online thing and the whole like meme of touch grass like there's something to that like yeah. I, I think you can probably go your whole day especially if you wake up go to the office before it's light come back when it's not light you could go your whole day without seeing the sun yeah without breathing fresh air like that can happen um and it probably happens all too often yeah too often especially like if you're living in the city and things like that you probably you have to be even more intentional you gotta like make a trip if you want to be around trees and yeah. go to a park so um yeah it's just so vital and even outside of the nature aspect how i think we can as people like intentionally pull ourselves away from technology a bit at least where we talk about dopamine detoxes yeah um, you know, addiction to our phones and like they all these algorithms are set up to keep us there everyone knows that and they do it's probably high. how you're watching right this. yeah you just like fed the next video and it's like oh this seems interesting as a topic i like you know, for whatever reason they they're starting to know you more and more it happens to me they know me more and more so it's like oh that's yep. a great video i definitely want to see that yeah and here i am keep it coming keep it coming. yeah so intentionally breaking away from the phone is an important one for me too yeah um, and i haven't done like a strict dopamine detox in a while and i think it's about time to do that um, probably about time for me to do one too yeah just because again there's something about it like a reboot factory reset on the brain like there's something so uh refreshing like turning off your mac turning it back on to everything yeah. for your human um natural sense i think also like speaking about getting like a factory reset to your brain yeah like over a hundred years ago which is not a lot of time in the grand scheme of right. the universe and just mankind and as a whole yeah when is the last time that you were like in the woods with technology that is like a, a hammer or like a saw or something like that you know what i mean like yeah. that was modern technology at some point right and now we have the internet which is like almost impossible to like wrap your head around it's almost a level of consciousness like in its own yeah it's so like, when's the last time you like in the woods just totally 
just a human being in the, in nature. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we all, we're we're really we're losing that skill set. I mean, when I'm writing about vipers and red rocks, I have these 400 days in the wilderness surviving. I could not do that. Dude. It's an unfathomable There's amount like of time. No way. You know what I mean? I would die. Yeah. And I think 90 percent of people watching this, and like people just in general, we hold 90 people playing. Yep. Could you survive like 400 days or a year? out in, in the nature wilderness. like by yourself would not happen probably not yeah so you know not that you have to do that but imagine you know there's got to be some benefit to reclaiming some of those skills yeah. of starting fires and, and um, being able to find shelter keep yourself dry and warm things like that useful when they're useful hardwired skills that are like yeah. in our DNA yeah that we don't practice right we were talking too about uh, going to the grocery store mm-hmm. and just how reliant you are on food and like Imagine if grocery oh, yeah. stores just shut down. Yeah, and there's not- a lot of deer back here too, so we're like, well, we would just go out, kill a deer, and figure out how to skin it. But there's also thousands of people that live right. in this this neighborhood alone. That's the point. He said that really scared me. I was like, yeah, you know, we would hunt and do that, and then he was like, yeah, but everybody's gonna have the same idea. So yeah. then he's gonna get violent deciding yep. who's gonna get what meat. Yeah. So you know, it's good to have these skills and know what you're doing. Um, it's also therapeutic to a sense. That's what I'm getting at. It's even like now, maybe it's not necessary. We don't have to survive. But like you said, it's just still therapeutic. There's something, I don't know, especially for dudes like us. Like it, it feels good. It reconnects you with some part of your primal man to be able to do something. Yeah, if I absolutely. start a fire with like a flint, you know, the one yeah. that like spits. Um, what is that? Slag. Slag? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I can make it by hand without having to use a lighter or something like that. That would make me feel super manly and good and I'll, yeah. I'll like have a <laughs> endorphin flood after that one yeah and there's just something about there that. are definitely studies to it where that yeah. just building a fire is such a morale booster like if you they say one of the things that you if you're in a survival situation one of the best things that you could do is create fire because it's such a win right that it can like completely transform whatever situation you're in in the wild so and just getting out there to it like even if you don't need it and you do it it feels good right you know, maybe we're just pyromaniacs, but yeah, maybe. And I mean, as a writer myself and a reader, I love Hatchet was the first one. Like I love yeah. reading stories about survival and nature, and I think that's what draws me to Louis L'Amour so much. I was talking to Casey earlier. Like every time I read a Louis L'Amour book, I'm learning something about that skill set, that life that we left behind um, of living out in the wilderness and living out in the wild. Um, whether it's a skill of tracking or how he talks about finding food like there's some nugget of wisdom that turns into what he called like a dude fact you know like yeah. when you hang out with your friends and you're like oh, you, did Check you know like this, this? you know yeah. <laughs> you just tell them a fact and uh yeah i think this kind of writing men's adventure fiction me and nathaniel have the podcast now i think it's having this res- resurgence and pulp fest has had its biggest attendance this year i think people are yearning for like really masculine stories like that because what we started this with of in our day to day, we can miss the sunlight, yeah. and we could just be stuck in these like. It's just so crazy to think about. I know we could just be stuck so in our routines, sedentary lifestyle, which we talked a bit about, which yep. is why I'm fatter than I'd like to be. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it, we could sit all day, do nothing, not see natural light, not be in nature, not and, breathe real air, yeah, not feel competent yeah. to start a fire, not feel like a man, and so living vicariously through characters, and then to me and what me and Nathaniel talk about a lot what you and I talk about a lot is transferring that energy what you're getting in that book that inspiration and actually turning it into something in your own life like make when I watch Rocky don't just watch Rocky sit on the couch and be like nice watch Rocky and go get a workout you know push yourself get a new diet plan start start getting after it which I think is kind of like the point between the reading your book Vipers and Red Rocks and the the challenge behind it of like hey do this which is fundamentally good for you right but then add something else that like it should hype you up it should inspire you absolutely and this guy um helped me develop that concept because we were talking about this very thing of like my books and books in general are supposed to inspire we want these characters to build you up to be something more and you know like you said these challenges these physical you know okay don't have them just read the book first off use that discipline and drive and springboard off of it to do more and more things because you can kind of like cycle into having these really good routines yep um so if you're reading every day to read the book and then you're doing the workouts every day and you're getting the sunlight you're journaling all of these kind of set you up for a good base to feel more human which a lot of them seem like daunting tasks but they're so simple right like just extra like if you just almost shut your mind off and just do Mm -hmm. just do it 
it's it's like almost becomes like a mindless task in its own yeah but it's the like hurdle of starting it and getting to that point right like journaling for five minutes a day that's the average short or tiktok video or whatever yeah instagram reel is like a minute long so five videos <laughs> which i guarantee you, you watching this cannot name the last five shorts that you watched right. you know and that's not a jab at you i can't name my yeah, last he did that to me videos. he was like what was the last youtube video and i felt cool because i knew the one and he was like what about before that and i was like well you can't ask me that question. so you could do that so mindlessly and so effortlessly yeah. what does it take to do this and then like just let your mind be its own thing instead of absorbing some kind of like machine inspired content yeah you know? even if it is like just something super human and natural given to you like someone's novel that they hand wrote and it's like this po- poetic piece it's still you consuming something so the whole point of, of the challenge is like getting you to do something and like you to produce um, I've always said you know when I had like a big obsession with like masculinity as a younger man that was like the conclusion I came to is like I need to find the balance between producer and consumer like, yeah. I can't just sit here and watch everybody else's stuff, read everybody else's stuff, and just be a consumer. But I do think, too, when you're reading something, mm-hmm. it's somebody else's idea, but it's your imagination right. and, like, how you perceive it. And that's why I think a lot of people, when they read books and then see movies, they're always yeah, like, the book is better. Right. Yeah. And it's because you're allowing your brain to to knock the cobwebs off and, yeah. and do what it's meant to do, as opposed to seeing somebody else's imagination created, finish their thought, and then you're consuming somebody else's imagination if that makes sense yeah it does and that's where you know i always harp on the point that a lot of people think reading fiction is a waste of time and i'm super against that because i think exactly what you said when you're reading fiction you're bringing what the author has their life experience every bit of wisdom and story that they're trying to tell you the thematics and then you're bringing your mindset your philosophies your morals and your those two are meeting and they're intertwining and this new creation is made it's forming its own new ideas because yeah, you're thinking about what they said but you're thinking about it from your viewpoint and you're pondering that and you sit with it and like you said with fiction you have more wiggle room it's your imagination it's not facts from a non-fiction it's not like this is the thing it's here this is a narrative this is a a moral a morale tale or something like a, a morality tale and you figure it out you tell me what you think and then your brain can kind of grow from that I yeah. like that so read not read fiction just not only non-fiction stuff like that fiction yeah. is important reading in general is reading in general like you said it's having on a total broad thing. yeah I, mm-hmm. I agree with what you're saying yeah it's you know mindlessly scrolling through reels watching a longer movie I'm going the wrong way it should be up but like you yeah know, like going you know reels longer film reading like it it uses more of your brain to do yeah certain to take things that to right and uh outside of all those like you said is the fully on you journaling fully on you working out like doing these things yeah. that are, are you so I had a mentor too right before I left active duty in the military who told me the statistic that those on average people who read on average two pages a day yeah or 14 pages a week are five times more likely to be successful Damn. or they they 5x their income I can't remember exactly what it was right. but it's a beneficial to just, read. and I think it has to do with being able to change your mind to think and like solve problems and it's only like two pages a day yeah is that's all it is for the statistic to be five times better or, um, dude i think which people, is so like yeah I just it's think, just two pages yeah that's day. what i'm saying two pages people would hear that and be like easy but they're not doing it yeah because it's almost like that weird gap like you're saying the weird mental gymnastics of like Oh, it's not even worth really doing two pages a day. Like, yep. if I'm going to read, I'm going to read five, ten chapters a day. You try to, like, make it huge, yeah. and you overwhelm yourself. So, like, you know, don't have the ego on you. you do two pages. Yeah. You're going to do two pages. But Even if it, like, ends in the middle of a sentence, if you just have the discipline, it'll be, like, two pages. That's it. Yeah. And I'll pick up where I left off tomorrow. And typically, you're going to read, end up reading more than two pages. Yeah. But, like, just giving yourself permission, I think, to say, okay, I'm going to only do two pages and not have an ego about that or not having any thoughts about that and doing that, I think that's helpful. So, and if you can do that out in nature, it's right, even, even better. Even better. Because then you're hearing the sounds of all the... Well, hopefully you're not around construction and, right. and people, but <laughs> you're hearing the birds, you're hearing the footsteps of deer and squirrels. Absolutely. And crickets, and it's just bringing you back to like what ultimately humans are meant to be. Beautiful. So I think to wrap things up, to end things for us, we should say turn your phone off after this video never look at it again uh (laughs) at least do a dopamine detox for a day you know give us one day off the phone um you know obviously i'm with you i have work on my phone i have 
to I have to look at a screen for my job. But you know when you're like doing not that. Um, yeah. So like you know, take a, take a day off YouTube, take a day off Instagram, take a day off all that stuff, and um, it'll change your life. Yeah, it will. I don't know. It could. It could. It could. It will. I, I don't want to over will. promise here, but it is is pretty substantial what you could kind of figure out when you let the static of your mind start spinning again and hear yeah. its own thoughts. Um, when you're always drowning your thoughts out with something, you know, every time you're in the car listening to something, you're only getting yeah. inputs. Your your mind doesn't have a chance to, to spin the wheels. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it yeah. will change your life. You'll get a new idea. Who knows where it'll take you. But turn the phone off. Dopamine detox. Pick up a book. Doesn't have to be my book. But pick up a book and then do the challenge that's on my Instagram, which is um, I'm not going to be able to get it fully off the top of my head, but you read whatever, 10 pages a day, I think it was. Two. Two pages? Well, it's not pages. in our challenge. Oh, in the challenge, Our challenge yeah. is 10 pages a day, 15-minute workout a day, go out in nature every day, and nightly journaling. Those are the ones I can remember. That might be all of them. But that's the thing. It's like push yourself, get into a good routine, reset, get out in nature, and, and remember to be human. Yeah. Oh, okay. man. Anything else you want to leave them with? If you do need a good book to read, Vipers and Red Rocks <laughs> will be linked in the uh, description section below. Absolutely. All right, guys. Take care. Till next time.